Previous research in medical applications of binary image classification machine learning models have been hindered by data imbalance, where there is an unequal distribution of data in each category of a data set. This is especially prevalent in medical imaging, as typically the number of healthy individuals outnumber the amount of sick patients. Imbalanced data set can lead to biased learning, which produces a biased output and a lower predictive accuracy. The potential impact that a false diagnosis can have on a patient currently holds back its full adoption into the medical field. With improvements, it is anticipated that machine learning could help doctors make more informed and accurate clinical decisions. Our project was centered around resolving data imbalance through generating more data in the minority data set by applying image augmentation. Basic image augmentation is when we duplicate the minority dataset and apply geometric transformations such as zooming or flipping. Our eyes may be able to immediately recognize that the original and augmented images depict the same original subject, however to a computer, the values at each pixel for each image appear to be completely different. Now since machine learning adjusts parameters depending on the value at each pixel, we have now effectively topped up our minority dataset with more training images. From current research, it is still unclear which combination of augmentation techniques is most appropriate for medical imaging. Thus, we began by testing the efficacy of basic augmentations on a chest x-rays dataset. We further tested a new deep learning technique, where minority class images were synthesized from scratch through a DC GAN. Deep Convolutional Generative Adversarial Networks, or DC GANs, are composed of two neural networks, a discriminator and a generator, which compete against each other. The discriminator attempts to distinguish the generated images from the real images and produces a classification error describing the generated images as either 1, real, or 0, fit, and it learns how to discriminate better over time. The generator generates images by converting a random vector uniformly distributed between negative 1 and 1 into an image of the same size. The generator uses the classification error from the discriminator to generate images which the discriminator cannot distinguish from. These are our results after 1200 iterations. If we look to the right, we can see two main factors which we found to influence our GAN. The first being the size of the training data set. These are images produced with 1407 training images, and these are images produced with 4273 training images. As you can see, the size of the training dataset has a huge impact on image quality. The second factor was mode collapse. As you can see in this GIF, the GAN does not progress after a certain point. This is because the generator overpowers the discriminator to a point where the discriminator cannot distinguish between the real images and the generated images. We found the solution for this was to lower the speed of which the generator learns so that it does not learn to trick the discriminator too quickly. We set up and tries the dataset containing equal numbers of sick and healthy images. We then artificially reduced the sick dataset by 50% and applied both simple and GAN augmentation separately and together in distinct trials. This was finally combined with the healthy dataset to form the final dataset, which we passed through the machine learning model. After training, we fed the model with the testing dataset to classify in order to evaluate the efficacy of each augmentation technique. The main metric we used was the F1 score. It takes into account both the machine's correct and incorrect predictions. Our controller had equal numbers of original sick and healthy images, and so it was a balanced dataset. In general, flipping, random rotation, and zooming performed well. We theorized that was because these methods were non-destructive. In other words, they did not blur or distort the image. Gaussian blur and random brightness performed poorly. We theorized that was because those methods were destructive. The GAN alone did not perform well, but adding a non-destructive basic image augmentation improved the results of the GAN, but destructive basic image augmentation worsened the results of the GAN. Overall, augmentation can improve predictive accuracy in an imbalanced dataset. Non-destructive basic image augmentation or GAN plus a non-destructive basic image augmentation performed the best. Our research has great relevance, especially in the COVID-19 pandemic. In the early stages of our future pandemic, there will be an imbalance of data due to the lack of scans of infected patients. Augmenting these datasets can help train accurate image classification models, which can be critical in assisting doctors in slowing the pandemic in its early stages.